Hello everyone. It is Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. I hope you're having a great night and great start to your week. We are going to do some live coding here. I know um, on Sunday we were doing some coding and uh, that was fun, but we're going to switch up gears here today. We're going to try to learn a brand new language, the language of Rust. A coding language that I have never had any experience working with. So my background is in data science. I work with Python pretty much exclusively. I've never really um, messed with other programming languages. What's up Vegas? Welcome to the chat. So I want to expand my palette a little bit. I have worked, you know, I write SQL. I do bash shell scripts. I, I've done stuff with R, but you know, we need to learn something brand new and that's going to be Rust today. So we're going to see how it works and we're going to try to just figure it out from scratch. So let's go over to the camera and let's talk about goals for today. We got some goals. Number one is to figure out, well, I, I need to write shorter things here. Hey, everyone in the chat. Welcome. How are you doing? All right, so I need to figure out, number one, install Rust. Um, Rust Jupyter Notebook, and then Data Science Tutorial. I just wanna get into it and start coding. Hey, why Rust? I don't know. I don't know, why not Rust? It seems like it's popular and um, yeah, let's just learn a little bit about Rust before I dive too much into it. So, uh, let's look up the Wikipedia page for Rust, the programming language, so we know a little bit about what we're going to learn today. So, Rust is a multi-paradigm, okay, I'm not going to read all this, uh, it, it emphasizes performance, type safety and concurrency. That's something Python doesn't do is, um, is require you to, uh, to identify what type of each uh, element that you create. Is it Rust or Go? We're gonna do Rust. So before last stream I had talked about doing with, with Go, but I found some tutorials with Rust, so we're gonna go with this. So um, how old is it? It was first appeared in 2010. And it's cross-platform. It has file extensions, RS and RLib. Uh, there's already some stuff I learned about Rust that I, when I was trying to get it set up here, but let's go ahead and shut this down. I have a Jupyter Notebook up, but we're gonna go into my Rust data science. So this is the only thing I've done so far. The only thing I've done so far is at first I tried to install Rust and then um, I did it just with, with, uh, apt pseudo apt install R rust or whatever it was called, um, rust something. And then I found out that you need to use this package manager. Um, so rust up. So this was something I, I found online, which said to install using this URL. And I forget what it's even called. See, this is really going to be really going to be like a newbie trying to figure out how to install Rust. Yeah, Rust up. So if you've installed Rust up in the past, I guess this is like your package management. I don't know. But I ran this command to install Rust. So it looks like this Rust install. Downloading installer. Um, OK, so it's going to update. Yeah, and then there's all this stuff with cargo, like use cargo to install stuff. Oh, another reason why I wanted to uh, work with Rust is because this kind of sparked me, this guy's YouTube video on like, he did just like a simple coding video. It's a good one, I'll put it in the chat. Um, but it's a way, oops, I hope that link works. This guy goes through like, how do you, is Rust for data science? And the answer is kind of no for the most part, but 
I guess there are some way, there are some times where Rust might be helpful, and it's definitely uh, potentially faster than Python. And then he goes through this example. I think he just does like a, a simple decision tree. Um, but we're gonna follow this this tutorial that we have. Uh, but first, I need to get Rust installed on my machine. So proceed with installation is gonna be one. Rust is now installed, great, okay. So, to configure your shell run source home cargo env. What, where am I, am I in the shell? Okay, so now, now let's, you should look at Scython 2 in the future, yeah, definitely. I mean, I can't just spend all my time learning new languages or else I'll, I'll get nowhere, but it's fun from time to time to try to learn something new, right? Especially in front of people so they can make fun of you. Feel free to make fun of me if you want. Okay, so Rust for data science tutorial. I found this here, but before that, oh yeah, our to-do list. So we installed Rust, that is checked off of our to-do list. Number one is done. Number two is, let's try to install this Jupyter Notebook because it will be kind of familiar to do it this way, I guess. So if I go into my terminal and I write which cargo, is cargo installed? Let me X that out of there and try to rewrote which cargo. Okay, so now it's found my cargo uh, located in my uh, local directory. And I'm gonna do cargo install EVC XR Jupiter. All right, so I don't know what it's really doing right now. It's pulling a crate. So I, I'm, in, I'm assuming this is something like pip installing. While that's installing, let's go Cargo is a Rust package manager. That's right. So this is like, this is like CRAN for R or um, or PIP for Python or PyPy, I guess it's called. Or I guess it's kind of like Conda. Like it, it manages dependencies. It compiles your packages. That's more like Conda. and makes distributable packages. Okay. So I guess it's downloading this EVC XR Jupiter. And I'm wondering, while that's going on, let's go into this cargo directory and see what's going on in here. So there's a env file. This looks like it's probably called in my bash RC right now. So let's open my bash RC cargo. Yeah, look. This bottom line was added to my, yeah, I'll make some lines here. So this bottom line was added to my, not that other stuff, but this was added to my bash RC, which then made cargo identifiable from just my straight up shell. So that, that made this cargo ENV available. Now I can look, there's a package cache. Oh, maybe that's being, um, modified as we, as this is installing. So I shouldn't look in there. There's also a registry and let's just cat things. Cause I don't want to, there's a signature. Don't know if that's bad for the show. Everyone <laughs> uh, off topic. Is that Andy's here? This is a 60 minute IPA. Um, so we are, what are you guys saying? Scython is basically Python with types and some decorators. Learning curve is non-existent, but it's a lot faster. Oh, okay. Um, Python usually, like most of Python that I use, when it's trying to do stuff that's fast, it's using a C library and just using the Python API. So it's like the Python doesn't have to be fast as long as it's just access, it's the easy interface to interact with the stuff that needs to be fast, right? 
Have you had a tutorial on setting up Tmux? Looks very much like the conf I have. I did make a YouTube video about um about my setup, like my entire setup. I didn't go into too much detail. I just said that my uh, Tmux basically is made based off of this like pretty uh, T Tmux config file that I found online. All right, so um, let's see what this says to do to install this. So now that we have this, wait, so I can just call this? Okay, so then it has in here. So guys, in here, there's a bin directory and these are all my compiled stuff. So like Rust is in here. Wait, oh, Rust C, that's Rust C. That's what I had to pip install. All right, so that's just straight up Rust. But now because this bin directory is a part of my path, I guess that's why I can just run this evxcr install. Okay, so what did that do? That wrote a bunch of stuff into my local, local share Jupyter. Okay, so now I have all these Kernels Rust. Were these all already there? And now I just have this kernels Rust. There's a, a JavaScript linter. Let's open this logo. What is this logo? Oh, it's just the Lust Rust logo. Really small one. Small for you all. There we go. So there's a Rust logo here in this now kernels. Okay. Uh, if your operating system is an older version, it has a different libc. To actually use Jupyter, you'll need a Jupyter notebook installed. You'll also need the source for the Rust standard library and called if you've already used Rust analyzer you'll likely have this installed to install this. Okay, so now I just run a normal Jupyter notebook and it's going to know that... All right, running Jupyter lab in here. I don't think it's just going to show rust. Oh, whoa. Look how wrong I was. Look how wrong I was. It is here. Uh, you love the new Twitter video on YouTube today. Thanks, Big Larry. I I'm glad you liked that. I try to make it short and sweet for you all. What am I learning, Stunner? We're trying to learn rust. We're trying to learn how to code in Rust. We're trying to learn data science with Rust. Um, so let's shut this down. What if I activate Jupyter uh, Kaggle 2 and then I do Jupyter Lab in here? Is Rust going to show up? Because I think it might be pointing to a different. No, it shows up in here. All right, so here up in the top right, can you guys see this? It says the kernel I'm using is Rust. Am I coding in Rust here? Let's just print hello world. If it was Python, this would work. But clearly we're not in Python. We're in Rust world, baby. We're Rusters. We are officially Rusters. Yay, we did it. Rob, there's a place I can find a list of all the things you scrape from Twitter. You mentioned a few, but wasn't sure if it was all. All the things you could scrape from Twitter? Big Larry, isn't that like an infinite answers to that question? That's like saying, what are the... I'm, I might not be getting your question right, because... Do you mean like the different things that you can... Um, 
filter your query on. Like there's set syntax when you're searching, when you're querying uh, in Twitter to filter down your searches. Hopefully that's what you mean. Hello, ow, that D, D and B sounds good. Yeah, is it too loud? I am kind of annoyed that when I stream, I can only listen to, unless I want my videos to get taken down, I can only really listen to music that, you know, it's fine, but it's not my favorite type of music. Like it would be cool to just, when I first started streaming, streaming, I didn't care about the video staying up. So I just listened to all music I enjoyed and I kind of missed those days. Okay, so how do we comment in Rust? Two backslashes, that was just a wild guess. All right, so now we're coding in Rust in a notebook. I thought Rust is compiled. How would that, how does this work? Custom output. I don't know what this is. Prop prompting for input. Let's see if this little bit of code works. Where is it prompting? I'm so confused. Name? That took forever to say name. Rob. No. Not going to tell you my password. Okay, so that worked. That worked here. That worked in. We're running Rust. And let's also go to this other example they have, which is much longer. Let's try to figure out what they're, what we're doing in here. So we're making a matrix. This stuff confuses me. What is going on? HTML that push string. What's the, what's TD? Oh, this is making a table. Like making an HTML table. Okay. Okay. So that looks like something. I get it. It's a lot of code to make that, but you know, it's rust. So it's super fast. All right, let's restart this and let's try to do some data science. Uh, we've got to learn the hello world of Rust, right? That should be the first thing that we do. Whenever you learn hello world will be what we print here. Whenever you learn a new language, you need to, you need to print hello world. So we ha always have to make a main function. I guess I'm not sure if that actually is true in so Rust has a lot of brackets, it looks like, like this. We define our function like this. And of course, print is print ln. Hello world, like this. Am I missing something? Exclamation point after this. And semicolon. Okay, so this needs to be double quotes. It's not like Python where it doesn't care about quotes. Um, then do I need to run main in this cell because I'm, it's not like I've written a script here. There we go. We wrote hello world. We did it. I think Rust uses brackets whereas Python uses indentation. Okay, so like anytime you see this, it's as if we have a new tab or, or uh, space indentation. All right, we wrote hello world. That should have been number one on our, or number two on our list. But we've done these two. So yeah, let's say three is hello world. We did that. Now this is four. Do you like the music video you sent me, Robert? Oh yeah, that was kind of bizarre. I forget what it was. I see what you're saying. Herbie Hoover. Herbie Hoover is smart. Yeah. Like, why am I doing all this when I can just print LN? Uh, I got to remember double quotes. Hello world. Okay. So it adds this. Maybe that's just because we're executing it in Jupiter and it's acting weird because of that. Uh, but it adds this. 
So can I assign, let's just, let's just mess around here a little bit. So can I assign a variable like, uh, like in Python, if taco equals one, that's not going to work, right? So we're going to have to define a taco. Is it like an int taco? Maybe just looking at this will be a good way to, before we jump into the data science stuff, know the basics, like the primitives. All right, so we did hello world. The primitives are, we have integers i8, 16, 30. Okay, so this is like the um, bits used, unsigned integers. Oh, these i's are assigned, u's are unsigned, f are floating points, char for characters, that's gonna be like a string. Bool, true or false, and then unit type, whose only possible value is an empty tuple. Why, why, why? Does anyone understand that? Looks pretty much like JavaScript, someone's saying. If you're learning Rust in the fly, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. Well, we're just trying to do. All right, so in order to define something, let's do let taco, let just let the taco be. And then we're gonna say this is a uint equals five. Is that gonna work? Error, expected semi, ugh. Oh yeah, it's not uint. Uint's a Python thing. So I need to do, <laughs> I need to do u8, u8. Yes, we have a taco. We have five tacos. Uh, let's do five tacos and then let's do I ate and do negative five for pizza. Taco plus pizza. No implementation for adding. Um, hmm. But since I can't make this taco into negative five because it's an unsigned. And why am I, why am I um, hiccuping so much? Uh, let's make this 32 bits. Which one is faster, Python or Rust? I think Rust. I think Rust, but it's. All right, so let's just do an I int. Oh wait, I int. And then try to add taco and beer. It equals, yes, okay, so now we can do that. So in order for us to add these two things, they have to be the same primitive. What if, what if one of these is, is is a I eight. Can we add these together? No implementation for this. Okay, so then they also have arrays, which looks like they're lists and tuples, which are like a tuple. Oh, this is weird. It infers the type. Let mute infer type equal 12. Where's this I64 inferred from? Oh, it's inferred from when it's de defined. A mutable's variable can can be changed. Error, this type of variable can't be changed. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, I think we know Rust now. We know enough about Rust. What else should we do? Rust for long. Uh, let char. Oh wait, no, let me char equals Rob.
expected Oh wait, I can write in here? Oh, these are scalar, four bytes each. I don't understand, how, how would you have a long string then? Characters, A, strings, A, B, C. So what, what's a string? Where's a string? Doesn't have a size known at compile time. Oh man, this is just as bad. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I write the whole thing. String uppercase. Literals and operators. So integers, floats, characters, strings, booleans, and unit type can be expressed using literals. Integers can alt alternatively be expressed using hexadecimal, octal, or binary notation using these prefixes respectively. All right, so this kind of makes, reminds me of Python like a Binary string would has this B before the quote. I don't know. Should we just follow a tutorial that like then try to figure it out there? All right, we made a matrix. Data science tutorial in Rust. Let hello string from hello world. Okay. Stefan's here to save the day. Let me try to copy this. Of course, it's not going to let me copy it. Um, so here we, as we assign hello equals to this string. Then we have to say from hello world. And then can we do print ln hello? Do I need a semicolon? Error format arguments must be a string literal. Can I do like type on hello? What's this delimiter crap? I have no idea. Did he, did he mention why rust? No, just cause I'm trying to, like I wanna be in pain tonight. So we're gonna learn rust. I don't know. I just wanna learn something new. Um, I did mention this, this, uh, this guy's YouTube video did kind of spark excitement in it for me. So this is, I put this in the chat earlier. So I guess if you're looking for a reason why it would be that, um, it would be this one. And I just want to see if I can use another programming language to do data science. Oh, Stefan has no idea why that works, but you found this in the docs. All right, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure out this data science tutorial. So let me pull this one over here. Rust for data science tutorial. So I don't know if I can run cargo in here uh, but let's, yeah, I can't just run this here, right? This would be within Rust. So I need to exclamation myself out of here. And maybe that doesn't work like it does in Python. So this is probably something I'm gonna have to do here. So I'm gonna have to do, go here, Rust data science, which I'm in. Yeah, this directory I'm in. And then I'm gonna run this cargo new R data science 
tutorial one and well and then that's just going to create a new application so now if we go into this tutorial what do we have automatically we have a git so is this it's already a git repo that's interesting you thought julia was making a comeback someone thought julia is making a comeback maybe it is so all this this cargo really does is it created a directory that's now here if i refresh this i think that has a source with our main rust file okay so it cargo will create this automatically it looks like it also created oh the name of it the version the edition oh it's tw it's a year old and that's that so we did that i think i understand how cargo works Okay, so then we have to, once we've CD'd into this directory, then we cargo add. So this is like installing, I think. ND array, I'm imagining that's like NumPy ish. ND array rand. ND array stats. Noisy float. Poloto. Okay. ND array. Oh, I didn't spell it right. Forgetting my A's. Okay, so this creates the IO index, added some stuff. So now let's see what's in this cargo. Ah, cargo lock. So this is cool. It's like keeping track of all of our packages. Some of these names remind me of Python stuff like iter tools. That makes me feel good. ND array makes me feel good. All right, noisy float. So these are all the packages I think we just installed. You guys with me? Trevlar is helping me out. Let me equal string. So we're gonna get the hello, let me and string equals Rob. Oh, this was is this what I was missing? And then, oh wait, and I don't think this is code that you're saying. And then print me. Oh, this looks like Python-ish. This looks like the old Python format. Yes, is, is learning Rust. Look at me. Rob is learning Rust. Look at me. Wait, Rob is, yeah. That worked. Your 2ML has your dependency, someone says. So. Okay, so that's this cargo 2ML. I see. This is like, so this is like my requirements.txt, like the equivalent-ish of that. Uh, Demo is asking, hi, I want to offer promotion to your channel. Viewers, followers, the price is lower than a competitor. Um, no, don't advertise on my, on my channel, please. That sounds, that looks like so scammy. How do I ban this person? Am I really, do we have that big of a crowd that it's worth spamming to? Ban, ban. People are so excited for me to ban this guy. I'm gonna just put him in timeout. <laughs> All right. Um, so, our source, I guess this is where our real code would be. This is where our, our main is. It's weird that I have this, I hate these IPY checkpoints, but move this. 
and we're on our way. So what have we done? We've installed some packages, basically. We made an environment, I, I think, or like, we made a setup thing for, uh, for going, and now we're going to actually do our code. Um, all right, so why are we using ND array? In Rust, there are already arrays or lists. Yeah, we looked at that. We, we already learned all that. Well, we kind of understand that there, there are lists here. Um, right, these are arrays. And also vectors in the language itself allows for many different types of manipulation through powerful iterators. What is more that is offered a bit by the bare Rust language. So that's interesting. It's kind of like NumPy being built into Python. So you would think it would be faster. But they're saying still, ND array is specialized to handle n-dimensional arrays with a mathematical n view. So it's basically like they're saying in this tutorial that Rust, at its core, can do a lot of the things NumPy can do. But it Rust still has its own NumPy because there's some things it can't do that it needs. Thus, ND array builds over the power already provided by the language. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so at the top of our main Rust file, we would add this. So should we do two things at once? I think I should just run everything in. Hmm. Now this is interesting. So how is this going to work? Do I have to now go into this source directory and create a Rust script in, in here? Is that gonna work? No, cause it's undeclared module in here. So let's just say I, I ditched, if I was to ditch the whole Jupyter thing and just go into this source directory and in here, yeah, let's remove this untitled. And in our main, do we just add it up here? Now, how do I run this? Wait, is Rust compiled? I think so. Yeah, Robert, you're confused. I'm confused. We're all confused. We're you are with me on that one. So I'm looking at their example. Yeah, so they do have it like this. Our main file has this ND array prelude star. Is this star kind of like import star in Python? Probably a bad thing to do not explicitly saying, but now here's the problem. I don't even know how to run my Rust program. Like, I don't know how to see if this program runs from the way it's built. Maybe it compiles just in time, someone say. That sounds like, like true. Ah, cargo run. This guy's here to save me. Could not find that. Oh wait, cause I'm not in my, I'm not in my cargo space. Cargo space, hey. Cargo run. Boom! We've solved, like we've learned Rust completely here. No, no, we didn't. It's still failing. Unused import. How did it know to print hello world? What the, what the flip? Oh, did I put that in my main? Yeah, I did put that in my main. I was, I was freaking out there for a second. All right, so we, it's just yelling at us because we didn't use this. It's an unused import. Is there no one that knows Rust that can help? You know, it's uh, Trevlar. Trevlar in the chat in, in Twitch has been helping. Um, so 
let's keep on going. Let's go with this. Um, I don't, so I don't think I can. I don't think I can use this without actually. Okay, so let's try it. Let's try it here. Can I just say, it was the problem that I didn't use can't automatically determine the type of variable of array one please give it a type is this a warning let's put this all in a main Uh, what's the syntax? What's the syntax? Is it like this? Oh wait, I also deleted that one. Cannot find macro array in this scope. So I just restarted the kernel. I'm gonna see if this works. Ignore warnings like Python. Problem solved. <laughs> Bury your head in the sand. Error, cannot find the macro array in this scope. What the what? Now it's yelling at me two times. All right, so maybe we're just gonna have to give up on, on that and just go in Vim, just Vim it. Remove this untitled crap. Remove this stupid iPy checkpoints. And let's just go like we're total hardcore hackers and we're gonna go here into Rust for data science. We're gonna go into our data science tutorial we're gonna go into the source and we're gonna vim in this main. And then we're gonna make a tab right below it. Yeah, let's just do this, we're so cool. And let's go ahead and run cargo run here. Now it's complaining that this is not used. But now we're gonna in here say, let array one equals our array, which I guess we're importing from here. And then one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, five dot, six dot. I think in the, t the actual GitHub repo, it's more than that. And then we're gonna print our array. All right, let's save that. And it's yelling at us. Unexpected token. Oh, oh, semicolon. He even tells, look at this, how nice Rust is. Help, add semicolon here. A noob like me didn't know that and it helped me out, thanks. Okay, we ran it, we ran our program. We have an array, it's like a NumPy array, but it's in Rust, so it's definitely better. What language are you learning? I'm new in your channel. Hey, welcome, Thai. Um, we are learning Rust. I usually code in Python, and, and I'm trying to learn Rust. For data science. Yeah, let's just go into here. Yeah, now this is cleaner. Cargo run. So now we have an array. That that makes sense. I know what's going on there now. You guys with me? Um, now I gotta actually close this stuff out so I can jump back and forth a little bit easier. How far into this are we? And I just learned how to make an array. Hey, Rome wasn't build, built overnight. Slowly and surely.
All right, now let's, let's compare this to a list. So it says that ND array provides an array macro that de detects which type of array base is needed. In this case, a 1D array. That makes sense. Notice that underlying array base already implements standard format display function. Okay, I noticed that. Com compare it to the standard Rust array. Let's call them lists in order not to confuse them with ND arrays. Okay, so let's compare these with like a normal array. Let ls1 equal, uh, let's just copy this stuff over, right? Let's, let's yank this and that's, oh man, that's how bad I am in them. Yank this and put it here. Yeah, okay, so there we go. So now we have this list, which isn't being used, so it's complaining about that. And then we're gonna print, yeah, let's just copy this line. But let's make this LS1. And well, let's call this a 1D list. And let's go ahead. Why is it saying it can't be formatted with the normal formatter? Oh, okay, so then I have to do in here, 1D list slash T. Oh, that's what it's saying that's auto formatted. I have no idea what this is. Colon and then a question mark. Yeah, so it formatted these as integers, I guess, is the big thing that we're learning here. Do you guys follow? Everyone loves Rust, but no one marries. <laughs> what the heck is Prelude? I think that's the sub module in which we're importing this array. I don't know for sure, but I think. I don't like that there's a star there. This gives me like bad vibes from Python. You never wanna, you never want to uh, just import star in Python. Now let's make a vector. A vector is gonna be, yeah, let's just, let's just copy this copy this and paste it right here and change this to a vector. Let vet one equals X, oh, vec exclamation point. So the vector I think is also being imported from ND array. And this is gonna be a one D vector and then we'll just do this. Guys following me here? And then we're gonna run this. All right, so those look identical. All right, look, we got the exact same result that they're saying we could get with this. Now let's try to sum Try to sum two arrays. All right, sound good? Wait till they get to borrowing. I'm going to work through small examples. Rust, rustlings? What's that? I'd rather stub my toe at the end edge of the bed than Learn Rust? Wow, the thrill. That means that you get to like watch me stub my toe. So you get to live vicariously through my toe stubbing. What's this rustlings that you guys sent? A project to contain small exercises to get used to reading or writing Rust code. Oh. Yeah, this is a good, good idea. I think we should stick on task though. I have problems with that. Um, so we're gonna stick with this tutorial. So we've done this, now we're gonna try to sum two arrays. 
So we already defined array one up there. So we're gonna create another array called array two. And what did they do here? They made it like 2.2, 3.3, 4.4, .3, Etc. Oh, they didn't even go all the way. All right, then we're going to let array three equals array one plus array two. So if we know anything about matrix uh, or, or like um, linear algebra, right? What do we think the result's gonna be? Because I honestly have no idea. But I think if this is acting like an array and we're summing it with this array, then the first value should be two, right? And then the second value should be 4.2. So let's check and see. We're gonna print this 1D array equals array three. And don't forget your semicolons. What did I do wrong here? Why is it yelling at me? Found print and LN. I thought println is corrected. Correct. Oh, oh, I was just talking about how I need to not forget my semicolons and I forgot one up here. Thank you, Linter. Cargo run. Yes, so the result is what I thought. It's two, hopefully you guys can see this. Two, 4.2, 6.3, 8.4, etc. What's the difference between a vector and array? I don't actually know. I know the difference between the list and array. They told us, well, they've told us so far that the list doesn't do this auto formatting. I guess the vector doesn't too when you print it. And then I guess there's some math. Like, should we try to do this with, try to sum two lists? I'm guessing that's where it won't work. Let's try to break things. Right? So we're gonna call this uh, LS2. And then LS3 is gonna be LS1 plus L LS2. And then we're gonna Call this summed lists. And then we'll make that LS3. And I think we have to do this. I have no idea what that question mark's all about. Let's try to cargo run this. All right, so this fails. Why does this fail? Array base owned repr dimension un u size one to float six. So LS one. Yeah, so it's not doing like the vector addition. I think that's why this is breaking. Not to get too sidetracked with things that don't work. but I'm guessing that's the difference between a list and array. Does that answer your question? Vector is a dynamic array, someone's saying, Trevor. All right, so let, we're gonna do some data science-y stuff. We sum two arrays. Oh, look, they do it next. They do it. Uh, I was one step ahead of them. Not really, but I'm going to set paste so I could paste this in here. They're comparing. Move all this over. Summing arrays versus summing 
lists. So if we, this is how we sum, sum the array. We already know how to do that. So let's delete this. But if we wanted to sum the array, we would have to make a mutable LS3, which is a clone of LS1. So I'm guessing this is like a copy. This is like dot copy. Um, and then we would have to loop over each item in the length of the second list and add the two together and add that into this mutable thing. Yeah, so this would be super annoying. This would be like how you, if you wanted to add two lists in Python, you'd have to do this that uh, without importing NumPy. So it's, a, it's the same thing, I think. And then I guess there's a, there's an easier way to do with a vector but still this is not super clean. So I think we can understand looking at these three examples, why out of all of these, we would choose to use this array from ND array. Yeah, ND array. Cause it makes this, this addition of vectors a lot easier. Okay. Let's try to find, okay, so now later in this tutorial, they're, t they're showing us multi-dimensional arrays. I kind of get the idea of that. I mean, I probably don't, but like they're doing a dot product. Let's just, let's just paste this in. 2D arrays are out. Let's just abandon quickly example using Rust standards constructs since we've shown, and let's just focus on ND array. Sounds good. So let's paste this in. Let's paste this in. and see what we got here. How do I unset paste? Uh, I forget how to undo paste. All right, so now we have other kinds of arrays and operations. What's this from LM? from LM211, let's see what this array four and five, when we do a cargo run, it's gonna break here. Oh, it's starting to do random stuff down here. Yeah, I got ahead of myself. So let's delete all this. And now we have a multi-dimensional array. That's a 4D array. And this is our 2D array. So this is just like in NumPy. You could have like a, uh, it's like a tensor. It's in PyTorch or, or TensorFlow or NumPy. You can have 3D arrays. When I look at this language, I miss R and Python more. They're way simpler. I agree, Ty. But it's cool to learn something new, right? So this already is a 2D array. Array four is 2D array. I don't know what this from Alum. Okay, so there's just various methods to create and instantiate 2D arrays. So this is, okay, this makes sense. So this is like in, in NumPy, if you just defined an array like this. Actually, this syntax would work, I think. Uh, if you did like NP array and then you wrapped it around basically everything here, it would work. 
And then this is just saying to make it of the size two by one. It can't be, because then how would you sum these? With the value of one in it? Can we go to like a rust? Okay, so maybe we should be doing this. Yeah, like doing searching in Google to figure out what this stuff means instead of guessing. Um, but yeah, it looks like this is the size. And these are the dimensions. And it creates a vector. Where T is clone, I don't know. Anyways, this works. Oh, because our output array is... I'm not quite sure. With the macro array, we need to specify all elements while in the array from... Oh, it says it here. We need to offer the shape in this case, two by one, and then the element to fill the array, in this case, one. So this is a lot like NumPy. Yeah, so this is very familiar. So in NumPy, you do like NP1s like, or ones, NP1s would, um, yeah, let's open up IPython. Import num NumPy as NP, so in, in Python and NumPy, you could do an array of one, two, three, right? That'd be our array. Or we could make it a 2D array. And then if we save this off as my array, then my array shape is two by three. But then you could also do NP ones and then give it a shape of two by one and it's going to make this two by one array so i think that's what we did here and we did this plus my array yeah i'm not quite quite sure why this Oh, it's because we're we're looking at the wrong output. This is just the output of the 2D array, I think. Which is the same as here in NumPy. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Got it. Got it. So we need we kind of need like up here. We need another print LN. Multiply arrays. Ah, my semicolons. I'm gonna get it after a while. Lots of rust is there to stop you shooting your eye out or someone else's when writing a hardware device driver. Ooh, I don't want to shoot my eye out with rust, so I'm happy to not shoot my eye out. <laughs> Hello, good morning, some people are saying. Some people are saying they love rust, nice. Have you checked out polars to create data frame in rust? Not yet. But I've heard so many good things about Polars. Polars has a Python API too. I need to make like a video about Polars. Either there's like a MLM scheme where people are promoting Polars or it's actually good. One of those two is true. All right, so I think I understand this. This is multiplying the arrays. This is creating an identity matrix That's that we know how to do, so let's So how would we do identity matrix in NumPy? 
Is it like E Y E? NumPy identity matrix. Oh, it's just yeah, it is E Y E. N P N P E Y E five. Yeah, that just makes an identity matrix. An identity matrix, so you don't know, is a matrix that is um, ones across the diagonal. It's always like this. Make sense? Oh, someone, yes, said yes, I. So, all right, so now we know how to do this in Rust, kind of. It's the same thing, EYE. A lot of similarities. It's kind of like... I don't know, learning is uh, going from English to something else, going to English to Spanish. Like you hear some words and you're like, oh, I know that word. When you suggest to learn Rust, I just have from your live and search about Rust programming language and see some videos. Uh, you just left, so someone said they just left my stream to go watch other videos about Rust. Okay, that might be a better way to do it. Probably. I don't blame you. What's going on? Some people are asking what's going on. Uh, we're trying to learn Rust. So this is 40 arrays. I think we're good with this. Let's continue with this tutorial. I think we can get completely through this tutorial tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. All right, so let's add randomness. Randomness. So I'm guessing that's like in here in the bottom right, if I import random, then we can do like rand rand int between zero and five. Ooh, I Python really doesn't like me. Import numpy as np, np random. Oh, I guess we could do np random. Huh. Import random. Ah, uh, okay. I'm not sure why that's not working. Random rand int three to nine. It might be because I'm running Rust. There, that works. Do lots of people in data science use Rust? No, I don't think so. But that's why we're learning it. We're getting ahead of the curve, ahead of, ahead of the game, man. In 2030, you're gonna have to know all of Rust in order to get a job. And we're gonna be like, oh, I have, wait, wait how many years would that be? Eight years of experience. Everyone in the chat can say they have eight years of Rust experience when they apply for a job in 2030. Hopefully I'll be dead by then. Don't say that. Do not say that. All right, so we're gonna import some new stuff. Let's go to the top of our script and let's add use ND array random. This is our like our random and then iterator random. That's, I don't know what that is. We're gonna find out. Should we? Yeah, we should just let this run. Uh, let's do, let mutable range equals rand thread range. Um, and then let 
faces equal, now let's just paste this. Move these over. All right, so now we have all of our random faces. Let ar array 16 equal an array from the shape vector. So it's gonna be of this shape, two by two. And this choose multiple faces dot chars dot choose multiples and mutable range for unwrap. Wow. That seems hard. And then we're gonna do some prints. Sampling from these faces, so we're just gonna print the faces, the elements are, and then that's gonna be the result. Why is this complaining? Oh, because I didn't do a semicolon? One little semicolon and you're never gonna let it go, Rust. Rust, you're all up in my business because I didn't put one semicolon. There we go. Do you guys see? We have random faces provided to us by Rust. Every time I run this, they're different. Top left looks like it's smiling a lot. Nope. Now it's crying. That's cool. Gotta, I gotta unwrap. Speaking of unwrap, I need to unwrap like what this line means. I know this makes it two by two. I would never know how to do that on my own. But I, I, I think I understand that. Didn't Mozilla simply create Rust because they were sick of memory management in C? Possibly. So then we're taking these characters, choose multiple. What's the, what's coming from random? Oh, oh, this mutable. RNG is the random thread RNG. What's thread RNG? And is choose multiple always just something you can do from... How do we just do let faces equal and then this worked? I thought we would have to define faces as like a I don't know. I want to go back to that Jupiter session and try this here because this is this is driving me crazy. This is driving me nuts. How can we just do this? Let faces equal that. This broke before when we tried. Oh wait. Wait, so that just works? But I can't do like let uh, dogs equals five does know that this type is, oh, I, I don't know how to get the type of things. All right. So we know we can do random stuff. Let's do some data visualization. Let's do some data visualization and that might be it. We're gonna use ND array stats, which is a crate for exposes statistical routines for array base. It can do a correlation and make a histogram. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna to try to look at the history, how to do the histogram. So let's go up to the top of this. And let's add some more. It's actually just right over all, everything that we have already with the correct imports that I know. Um, so what are we importing? Histogram, sampling strategy. This we might actually not end up using. And then noisy floats. I don't really know anything about that. Um, 
So data viz. We're going to make a random ar array with, yeah, let's just put all this in here. We're going to make an array with random numbers of size 10,000 using a normal distribution. I think that's what that standard, standard normal that we imported is. Yeah, that makes sense. So this array 17 should be like a normal distribution. Go, go Lang for DS. Yeah, go and go and uh, Russ are both fighting for my attention for, for doing data science stuff. Here's the thing. There's no way people are switching because the available resources are not the level of people to switch. That's true. I mean, I don't think. Brother, 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 will you teach us Rust or programming language from scratch? Please let you, please answer my question. I have math exam today. I have to read. What do you want? What do you want, Python programmer? Data dude just comes in and says box plot. What are you doing? Yeah, make a box plot. Everyone's just like ganging up on me. I'm just trying to learn. I don't know where the box plot, does it have box plot in here? Let's not deviate too much from this uh, this tutorial where I'm learning. All right, so we have this random array. What's this N64E? What's what's Rust Rust N64? Is that Nintendo 64? Seriously. This is like a Nintendo 64 runner. What? Okay, so it's it's noisy float. I wish we were doing Nintendo 64 ROMs. All right, no, noisy float is a floating point behaving like a F64 that does not allow null values. Okay. N is the same as stands for, so. I don't know, man. We're just doing it. So there we're, we're gonna make a grid builder. What's grid builder come from? Grid builder comes from this histogram. And let's just try to run this. This isn't gonna run. Yeah, it's going to yell at me because I'm trying to import things that I haven't used. I thought I used this already. So we got to add this other random example that uses uniform. And then this sampling strategy. We kind of skipped over this stuff. Oh, that is cool that you can do like sampling without replacement. But okay, let's try to run this now. Why is this not working? Let. Polato. Polato is not found. Uh, I see Gun 
What do you think about Julia? Will it be used in the future or not? I don't know. I don't really know the future. Um, I see GNU plot looks like matplotlib. Missing use. Yeah, but what the freak? Why? Why is this not working? What's Poloto? Someone wa Waddle Waddle wants to say your videos helped a lot. Great. I'm glad. Thank you so much for hopping in and, and hanging out. And I apologize that this video is not going to help anyone. It's just watching me struggle. Can someone explain to me Poloto? What the heck? What in the bruh? Here is their, in their GitHub repo, how they're using it. I'm basically doing the exact same thing. So let's, let's just make sure it's not, it's not just me. Let's clone this repo. Maybe this, um, maybe the version changed or something. So let's do, Get clone of this. Oh yeah. All right, so clone it. There's no, oh, get clone this. All right, now we have it. Our data science tutorial one, which is the one I directly cloned and then cargo run in here please work so maybe it's pulling different versions oh look poloto poloto's here it worked this one worked and then if i open this here i see we have our beautiful histogram with a clear background so it's actually not that beautiful, but it did create a histogram. Maybe look in the 2ML. Someone's saying, okay, that's a good idea. All right, so this is in my version. Actually, I don't know what version I'm in because I renamed that directory. So I'm gonna go into my version here and Vim in my cargo 2ML. Okay, so let's compare these versions. Whoa, so Poloto's version completely changed from 2.17 to 17.0. Did they change from doing... I don't know what, na what numbering convention that is. So can I just change this to 217.0? That's not going to work, is it? Hey! That worked. Thank you. Chip Monkey's got my back. And ILO juice, ILOS. Yeah, so it was in my cargo ML, but it was a, a older version or newer version, maybe. How do we make this histogram not so ugly? Graph.histogram. So custom ticks, I want a custom background. Looks like they're using a blue here. Let theme equals theme.append. How come I didn't have 
have to say use Poloto here. That that makes zero sense to me. Like, why didn't I have to import? Is it because it's an ND array prelude? Or is it because I'm using this syntax? Then it knows to use directly from that library and I don't have to import it. Hat Knight, I'm joining the Rust gang? Not exactly. I'm just trying to feel feel out what the hubbub's about. So this graph is a plot. Y marker. I put in Poloto and it auto completed to Pi plot. Cause it's like, no, you want to use Python, don't you? You don't want to use R or Rust. So we should be able to, I think we should be able to in our Jupiter, in our, in our, um, Jupiter session of Rust, where am I here? Will this work? Undecl undeclared crate or module Poloto. So how do I declare Rust Jupiter example, example with crate? Okay, so I do, do I do extern crate? No way this will work. Oh wait, maybe it did. Oh, but it just sent it to standard out, which doesn't work. Upgrade right, simple theme, upgrade right. Huh, so it looks like the way that you build it here though is like build and label. Can I add this to our existing plot that we know works? Build and label. I know that's not correct. What's it saying about this mismatch closing delimiter? Huh. Yeah, I, I think what we learned tonight is I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to Rust. But we're just going to do the very last thing. We figured some stuff out. We figured some stuff out. We're going to do the very last thing in their tutorial. Close, close this stuff. Close this crap down. Go back to our tutorial. Not this tutorial, not this one, but this one. And we're gonna make a scatter plot. We're gonna make a scatter plot, which just is using random numbers. This is where it creates the output standard normal scatter SVG. Okay, so this is how we add lines to it. Maybe we can try to modify that. 
Insert this here. Oh, set paste. Insert that in there. Try to run this. Cargo run that bad boy. All right, it built. We got a scatter plot here, of course, with that clear background, so it looks so ugly. Can I open it with something else? Um, open with another application. Pinta. Nope, still has the ugly clear background. You can draw it in here in a different layer. All right, what do we learn? New languages are hard. Not as smart as I think I am. No, well, that's always true. And um, you can do some stuff, it seems like, in Rust. I don't know why I would ever want to, um, but there may be a reason. Like I know Rust has its role for doing things, I'm just saying for data science stuff, I don't think I'm going to be leaving NumPy anytime soon to use ND array and Rust. Even if something needed to be really fast, would I ever be able to code it? I mean, if I knew Rust really well, then, then maybe I would. Yeah, it's like the chicken or the egg problem, right? Is it worth learning? So I can use it? Well, not if I don't know how to use it, but I won't know how to use it unless I learn, so. That's that. I hope, what about Go? We were gonna look at Go too. I don't know. I get confused with all this stuff. <laughs> I wonder if Golang is not as steep of a learning curve and with less boilerplate, is it? That was less than two hours. Yeah, that was quick. I can I mean, I can't handle it that long. <laughs> it was fun though to try to uh, to learn a new language. You know, we we did walk through the tutorial. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this tutorial here. So make sure you like give it stars on um, on GitHub and stuff. Watch, watch me not be able to even find it. This is the tutorial I walk through today. There's a SK Learn analogous for GoLang, Go Learn. Okay. I also know there's like a SK Learnish for for Rust. Yeah, Linfa. I think this is what that guy's video is about. Linfa. Inspired by Python's sklearn or scikit-learn. So it looks like it does clustering, regression, um, even SVMs. That's pretty good. All the pre-processing and stuff. So yeah, if you can do everything in sklearn in Rust, I would just have to see it side by side and then try to determine is it worth it. 72 episodes. Does Rust have a notebook version? Oh yeah, we were doing that earlier. That's what this is. But I didn't know how to in import external libraries until just right now. And even then I don't really know what's going on. So we were at, at the beginning of the stream trying to just print hello world and we got that far. So this is all in Rust. Brooks build. Oh, so this would be a good tutorial. It's probably a good idea to learn another language besides Python, someone's saying, I, I agree. I mean, it can't hurt to at least know how it works. 
And then someone sent this rustlings. Yeah, I saw this earlier. I heard this one's good. All right. On to the data. What do we want to do? Who are we going to raid? We will raid our boy Nick. Nick Wan. Data science. He's probably doing stuff in Python and not in Rust. So you guys might enjoy it more. Uh, thanks everyone for hanging out with me tonight. It was a lot of fun. Let's give the raid and then let's, uh, let's get going, right? Why is he not showing up? Nick Wan. Nick Wan. All right. 10 seconds until the raid's over. So thank you all for hanging out tonight. We do, oh, let me remind, let me remember to uh, promote a few things before we leave. So if you are in Twitch chat and you type in exclamation uh, YouTube, if someone could do that, that will bring up my YouTube channel, which I'm also gonna just type in here, uh, which is youtube.com slash Ramola. And then also you can join our discourse discord. You can follow me on Twitter. That should bring us up and uh, yeah, just like follow me on the interwebs. Also subscribe on Twitch if you haven't already. All right, that's it. Have a good night. Bye YouTube. Have a good one.